I'm Gloria Strode and welcome to Straightforward. Well, we have our annual visit from the doctor, our one and only Dr. B. Blunt. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Good to see you again. I know. It's that time of the year before Thanksgiving and Christmas and you have some wonderful patients that always follow the rules and then you have those um, probationary patients like myself <laughs> that just kind of sometimes follow the rules. Uh, but today I just wanted you to remind us of how we should be eating, what we should be doing during the holiday season because you told me before we normally gain weight yes. during that time. So. What's the spiel for today? Okay, so as Ms. Gloria alluded to, between Halloween and New Year's Day, people can gain like five to 10 pounds during these last few months of the year. So we added Halloween because of the candy? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. And all the offices have and it. And all the offices and mm -hmm. all the parties. So be very careful during this time period. Mm -hmm. um, with that in mind, you don't have to gain the weight. If you're mindful about the dangers and all of the temptation, you can know kind of how to prepare for them. Okay. So we'll just give the first tip for the new year is okay. never arrive hungry to any party. Never arrive hungry. So yes. what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to eat our regular meal before we go, which is probably what you would recommend, something like baked chicken or something like that. Oh, don't be like that. Oh, okay. But yes, mm -hmm. um, if you're at an office party, you know, you have a head time, at least try to eat like an apple, some nuts, a snack, a piece of protein, like you said, some chicken, mm -hmm. some ham, some turkey, but don't go hungry. It's just like if you go to the grocery store on an empty yes. stomach, you will buy too much. And a lot you of junk. Food. And a lot of junk. If you show up mm -hmm. at a buffet, starving, mm -hmm. You'll be on your third, you know, plate. helping and plate of food, mm -hmm. and you are just inhaling the food, but you're not taking time to slow down and enjoy the food. So don't go hungry. Eat something. Always remember from last year, drink right. your full cup or glass of water prior to any meal, and start from there. So we have to drink. Now, see, we were trained, which that doesn't make it right. You eat your food, and then you drink. Remember, we couldn't, which you probably don't know about this, you couldn't have Kool-Aid, which was the going thing. <laughs> I still love some Kool-Aid. <laughs> or iced tea until you ate your food. But you're recommending so we don't overeat. Exactly. Have an eight ounce glass of water. As least. much as you can, a full glass. So eight, 10, 12. 12? Mm -hmm. Then you won't have room for the food. Good. Oh, but then <laughs> later you're gonna be hungry and you're gonna overeat. No, not okay. necessarily true. All right. So your stomach is still a finite amount of space, uh -huh. like this. If we fill it up half with water, and then you start with your protein first, your meat, whatever that is, uh -huh. then your vegetables, and then those side items that tend to add all the extra calories like, and the sugar, like that dressing, like the macaroni and cheese, cheese. like the sweet potato souffle, which is my personal right. weakness. So we have to drink the water first. Yes eight to 12 ounces. Mm -hmm. Then you want me to just eat the meat. Me eat meat first. The meat first. Protein is amazingly important. But not the meat with the dressing. The meat first. Meat first. Then the vegetable. Then your veggie. And then the starch. Right, and remember from last year, mm -hmm. when you're eating the things that we know are probably the taboo, the, the dressing, mm -hmm. all that fried stuff, that mashed potatoes and macaroni and cheese. With gravy. With gravy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Three fork or spoonfuls. Three or four spoonfuls. Mm -mm. Three forks or spoonfuls worth. Only. Only. What? Mm -hmm. Three forks again this year. We didn't graduate to four. Well, I actually know someone that really practiced that. You know, they'll eat like. Good. Three so that way you're not depriving yourself, mm -hmm. you're literally tasting those things that you wanted, but you're not overdoing it. So you're still going to look amazing at the end of your holiday season mm -hmm. where the rest of your friends have got to go buy new clothes. Well, that's true. Or all of these extra on the garments. Yes, ma'am. You know, the <laughs> all these spanks and, and the long line right. and, and all of that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you have these pretend recipes 
because you keep trying to convince me <laughs> of these other substitute <laughs> items. Uh, the cauliflower rice, you say, is as good as the whole grain rice. Well, let me be clear. It's different. Okay. So I'll just speak about the holiday. So two, three years ago, mm -hmm. Instead of, because I like dressing. I do, I love turkey and dressing. Okay. It doesn't love me. The bread is not amazing. So there is a recipe out there. I should have brought you the recipe. So it's a cauliflower sausage casserole that's in the place of dressing. It's amazing. In the, you are from it's Atlanta. So there good. are no substitutes for cornbread I dressing. Know. But it's so good. Okay. It's like 10 grams of carbs and like the 40 that comes with your standard turkey and dressing. So it just depends on, did you just want it just because it's dressing or do you want something that's feeling amazing and healthy for you? Just decide what you want. I okay. personally don't want to gain sizes, so do I want to look good or do I want to feel good? Because looking and feel good are the same thing. Overindulging and spilling over your clothes. It yeah, comes with the price. It's not so hot at the end of the day, but it right. tastes good going in. Right. But those things stick with so you. So your philosophy is everything that's good to you is not good for you. You said that, <laughs> yes, ma'am. You have no shame. We're <laughs> Southerners. We must have dressing. And when you have your dressing, that's where your three forks come in. Have your three spoons. Enjoy it. Just so are slowly. We, we're Savor saying it. tablespoons or teaspoons. Ooh no, I'm just asking for a friend. A fork <laughs> or a teaspoon. Oh, oh, or a teaspoon. I just want clarification. So, you know, in case someone really wants to. Now, however, mm -hmm. I know the real. If you can limit a tablespoon, fine. Okay. Fine. Because I think that will just take the desire. Yes. And then you don't feel right. so cheated, and right. then it will feel like Thanksgiving. you've had some of your, your goodies. Yeah, and traditional. You know, we have to have those traditional dishes. Now, yeah, I can go without the gravy on my dressing. I don't have to have okay. that. But I do want the cranberry sauce. You can have the cranberry sauce. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it just depends on how much sugar Much sugar adding. in it. Oh, see, it's yeah, always you can, a catch. You can sub with some Splenda. Mm, don't I know, know that's quite the same. I know. Okay, well, what we're going to do is take our first break, go to our sponsors, and we'll be right yes. back. We'll be right back after word from some of our sponsors. Straightforward is brought to you by Chalk by Quincy introduces excellence redefined, tying pieces of the finest technology, luxury, and class with tons of style at chalklifestyle.com. Renal Associates LLC, a team of physicians dedicated to excellent kidney care with five convenient locations to serve you. Stark Avenue Columbus, Bratley Park Drive Columbus, Lafayette Parkway LaGrange, West Washington Street Eufaula, and Spring Street in Warm Springs. Vanessa Jackson's District 3 Successful Scholars Program, supporting students in achieving academic excellence, outstanding citizenship, positive social and cultural growth, believing in success for kids. Dr. Sheikha Shaw Family Medicine, connecting your health to your future. Dr. Shaw prides herself in providing compassionate health care and establishing long-lasting relationships. Conveniently located at 2827 Warm Springs Road, Suite 3B. Call her today at 706-324-4177. B&O Services, consumer-focused personal care homes, providing innovative and integrated services for persons with developmental disabilities. Creating quality experiences with a loving hands approach. For more information, call 706-330-1826 or visit bandoservices.com. And welcome back to Straightforward. We have our awesome Dr. B. Blunt, certified in bariatrics, which is weight loss, family, physician, here to give us all of those rules and tips we need to survive the holiday season. Yes, ma'am. This is that annual visit. Yes. And so you're going to make us feel guilty in advance. So I'm going to go on and get mine over with. So <laughs> on Thanksgiving <laughs> Day, when I have some of those taboo things, as you call them, yes. then I can say she really told me. I can't plead ignorance. Okay. 
So before we went to the break, you were talking about how we can substitute some of the sugar and use yes. Splenda. So what are some of the other, because the artificial stuff. So the. So what about dates? Can you use dates or guava or something like that? So you can use dates as a sweetener. Mm -hmm. I don't like them, but you can do that as a substitute sometimes for um, some of the other sugars. Some people mm -hmm. will grind up dates. Um, you can use banana puree and applesauce in the place of some of the butter. Applesauce in the place of butter? Or eggs. So what, where, where would we Swear. be putting the applesauce? What would we use that in? Certainly not in sweet potato casserole. No, no, no. Okay. Like if you're doing a, a baked dish. Mm -hmm. um, what was the last time I used applesauce? Like peach cobbler. <laughs> no, not a cobbler, but if you're... Um, Gosh, I haven't had it in so long. Mm -hmm. um, but it can be a butter substitute. And watching the heavy creams and switching it out for half and half as a substitute. You know, grilling, baking instead of frying. Like, I know we like our fried turkeys, but okay, people, let's go back old school. Let's put your turkey in the oven. It's okay. Like, we don't have to have fried turkey. But do we baste it with the butter? Or are we just going to use salt and pepper and that and just let it go plain? I'm just asking. Well, I'll use butter. Oh, really? But you can cut it in half. Okay. All yeah, right. I'll use butter. It's a ton of calories, but it's. it's but that's the, better you don't than want the it to be dry. Okay. And it's yeah. better than the frying. It is better than frying. Okay. Absolutely. So, what about the desserts? We, we have to get to that, and then we're going to talk about how people lose weight, and it's a life changing. You can't do it by the fads. But I want to make sure we get all this menu stuff out of the way so I can say <laughs> we did due diligence and we so, warned all of our viewers. Their um, purists do not like these sugar substitutes. Like right. They don't like the Splenda, they don't like the erythritol, those kind of sugars. Mm -hmm. I like them, but that's just because at least it lets me know that you're thinking about what you're doing. You're thinking about how much sugar you're putting in something mm -hmm. like last year for my sweet potato souffle which I love, it's my favorite thing, but to take out some of the calories, I used a can of pumpkin puree instead of all of my sweet potato, and I did a cup of Splenda with a cup of brown sugar. So mm. you kind of mix some of the good with the bad so you lessen your total. So it kind of power. masks. It kind of masks. So you still have some of your normal taste. Mm -hmm. But just a but little. less calories. So then we put pecans on the top and all of that. We um, now there is that, no substitute for brown sugar pecan topping. Like, okay, that is what it is. All right. But the sweet potato portion itself, you can mask that a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, the evaporated milk, you know, you can do certain things. Um, even they have butter that's the half calorie butter is weird because a whole stick of butter is like 800 calories mm -hmm. so they do have some that's half the calories but it's still real and then butter and some that's no salt and all of that well i mean stuff. the no salt is fine yeah. but that calories like a mm -hmm. whole 800 calories and most of our real good desserts call for two and three sticks of butters at 800 calories right. per stick mm -hmm. so if you can have a stick of butter that's only 400 calories wonderful so just kind of pay attention um to substitute your sour cream and those kind of things for natural yogurt will save you on calories and carbs and it's a healthier protein. So there are a lot of little so things So what about that you can eggs? Try. There's this one cake. Oh Lord, and it's like nine eggs and oh, that's the best pound cake in the world. No, really, you know, I had a cousin that used to make that. It's like a all that butter and nine eggs and you could just smell it well i will say from personal experience mm -hmm. you cannot mess with the pound cake recipe okay there are no substitutes for pound cake if you're going to make a pound cake and have it nice and moist mm -hmm. sorry okay each calories so you just have to that's not one you can sub. slice yes okay now with your um like pecan pie because i'll do my eggs for that i can do an egg substitute mm -hmm. but i'll do two egg substitute and two real so you can kind of switch some things out that you're not that you do not need that light fluffy texture. Now pecan pie is very sweet. So what are you using that substitute sugar for that? So you know, I when I go the, in Publix and I see sugar free yeah. peach cobbler pie or whatever that is, apple pie, I look at it because it's funny. Really, <laughs> if you're gonna have a peach cobbler and you live in Georgia, it needs to be a peach cobbler. It does. Unless you're diabetic. Unless you're diabetic. Right. In which case. Uh, 
the peach cobbles that I've had made with Splenda, mm -hmm. they're actually a lot better than you would think. And Breyers makes a low carb ice cream, mm -hmm. which is much better than you would think. So for the holidays, look for your low carb ice creams. They do not taste bad at all. They do not leave an aftertaste. That's my concern, the aftertaste. They don't leave an aftertaste. So, the good ones, not the cheap ones, but right. a Breyers, like a name brand, mm -hmm. they're pretty good. So you could have the a la mode yes. if you have the sugar-free One peach. scoop. And one scoop. Fourth a cup or half a cup. Okay. So we have to make sure the scoop is the correct size yes. and not the big kind not that Brewster's big, has. No, okay. All right. So what other food tips? Let's let's recap those because in the last segment I want you to talk about not starving your body, putting it into starvation mode. No, really, because right. I know people that are constantly dieting. They've yes. had the cabbage soup diet. They've had uh, the slim fast. You know, all of that, and then they always end up. Gaining, gaining the weight, the weight and then more. Right. Right. So any other food tips? We're going to drink the water. Yes. The 8 to 12 drink ounces. Drink your water prior to your meal. Okay. Don't show up hungry at your parties. Okay. Um, another thing that's very helpful as far as party going and visiting friends and family, mm -hmm. um, don't just accept what they're going to serve you. Mm -hmm. Be proactive and bring your own healthy dish with you to your party. So at least you know that the one thing that you brought, mm -hmm. you can share your healthy food <laughs> subs with your friends and family so they can try to be healthy too. At least you know so you have one thing that you can eat. So you're trying to cause a controversy. No, you're you know being a great guest. You're bring, look, I brought you this <laughs> fabulous casserole. I know, right? That is something they would certainly be talking about in the new year. Like, can you believe, you know, we're mm. Southerners. So. I'm so you should, don't show up empty handed. So look, you're showing up with something. Okay, all right. Fruit tray, veggie tray, something that you can okay, snack like on. Okay, like a veggie tray or yeah, something. Yeah, it doesn't okay. have to be. You're not trying to show somebody out. But you want to make sure that at least the one thing you bring to the meal, right. you have something that you can eat that is not going to derail your goals. Okay. Your goals may not be someone else's goals. Okay. But take care of yourself first. Okay, and we don't want to offend people, so we'll right. just bring a relish we, tray or something like that. Okay. All right then. Well, what we're going to do now, Dr. B, we're going to take our final break, go to our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Yes, ma'am. All right. We'll be right back with the word from some of our sponsors. Straight Forward is brought to you by Warrior Outreach. Contact Command Sergeant Major Retired Sam Rhodes or Kathy Rhodes. The Hugel Foundation. Enriching the community through Christian music support, community outreach, and the Georgia Through Photography Project. For more information, call B at 706-568-6431. Progressive Funeral Home, family owned and operated since 1952. The George Ford legacy of high standards continues today in the compassionate and professional services provided. A touch of dignity for those who care. Progressive Funeral Home, 4235 St. Mary's Road, trusted by generations. Best Care, transforming minds and bodies, leading the way in the latest techniques of medical weight loss and wellness. Certified in family medicine and bariatrics, Dr. Blunt is ready to assist in the transformation of your mind and body. Call today, 706-221-6477 or visit bestcarecolumbus.com. East Alabama Endocrinology, educating and caring for those living with diabetes in Alabama and Georgia. 1400 Bradley Lake Boulevard, 3320 Skyway Drive, Suite 602, Opelika. Take charge of diabetes and live your best life. State Senator Ed Harbison, serving the citizens of Georgia's 15th Senatorial District and on the front line for veterans every day. <music> Welcome back to Straight Forward. I'm having a wonderful visit with our expert weight loss doctor, Dr. B. Blunt. It's always exciting when you come because you know I'm a non-compliant patient and um, you work very hard trying to redirect me. And uh, my failures are my own. I own them. At least I don't pretend to you that I'm following the rules. Yes, no need to lie. The scale won't lie. I know, right? Ooh, that scale is serious. It will tell the truth. It will tell the yeah. truth. So, let's get in all of those wonderful tips. You said something about alcohol when we went to the break. You know, this is a 
big season yes. for eggnog and brandy and cognac <sighs> and all those things. So. Yes. So liquid calories get you in trouble. Oh. They absolutely do because they add a ton of calories and absolutely no nutritional value whatsoever. So can you drink and gain weight too? Oh, oh my God, of course. So it makes you blow up. Or so, something. I mean, eggnog, mm -hmm. alcoholic, non-alcoholic. Okay. Neither one of them has any nutritional value. Really? Oh my God. It's got no. eggs. I mean, <laughs> now it's delicious and I love eggnog, right. but you can find some low fat eggnog. I tried last year to substitute for that almond milk eggnog. It didn't work. Don't do it. I know. Just, you were trying to encourage I tried. me to I try. I tried and failed. It didn't work. Don't do it. Okay. Okay, so your eggnog, half a cup. Okay. No more. So alcohol, the problem with alcohol is, now you're plain alcohol. So you can have your vodka, you can have your gin or your cognac or whatever mm -hmm. your drink. It's the chasers that get you in trouble. Mm. No juices, no Cokes. No eggnog. No so you just want them to drink it on the rocks. Honestly, on the rocks. Oh, all right. Those are big girl drinks. Okay, so those are, get okay. your big girl panties on. Okay. Because it's the chasers that get you in trouble. Now, if you're able to do, mm -hmm. um, actually, I think the commercial they have with LeBron, that um, diet cranberry Sprite mm -hmm. is good with some vodka. Okay. As you had no calories and no carbs. Those kind of things are fine. Um, Coke Zeros, Sprite Zeros, those can be your chasers, but just not the Long Island teas with all this orange juice and all these juices and the mixers get you. And other problem with the alcohol is that once you're a little tipsy or drunk, you lose your inhibitions. So you're just eating and talking and laughing. You're no longer aware <laughs> right. that your own slice of cake number five right. because you've lost your inhibitions. Right. So that's another way that the mm -hmm. alcohol consumption. Or something. just a little bit more of the macaroni and cheese. Just a lot more of that. <laughs> right. So you kind of lose track of yeah, what, you're, what doing. you're doing. So that's another way that alcohol in and of itself can get you in trouble during the holidays. Okay. Now, I really have to address this. Yes, ma'am. People put their bodies into starvation. Yes. Um, had lunch with some friends in, in another place and uh, a friend that's a judge was saying to this young college student, you have to eat. You can't put your body into starvation. So. Talk to us about that for the people that'll go through the holidays and starve themselves. There are actually a couple of different schools of thought on that. Mm -hmm. um, so true starvation mode is probably something past ketosis, where ketosis basically means that you are consuming probably around 800 or less calories per day, mm -hmm. less than 25 grams of sugar a day. Mm -hmm. I did that for six months. I wanted my body to go in starvation mode. It was very intentional. Because you were trying to wear a wedding dress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> after Vanity. That, look, after that failure. Oh, okay. So, um, you can intentionally put your body in starvation, but you really need to be under the care of a medical provider that can monitor your electrolytes, make sure that you're not consuming too few calories. If you consume too few calories, protein, carbs, you can have muscle wasting, mm -hmm. um, destroy your bones, like it can mm -hmm. be detrimental. Mm -hmm. So those are things that do not need to be anything long term. Mm -hmm. And that's just for a short period of time. Right. It's not always the best for people that are not disciplined. It's amazingly challenging. Mm -hmm. So all in all, I would say it's best to eat some small amount of something every three hours and not do starvation. Okay, so my dad was very thin. Well, good size, not thin. Right. But he would eat a little bowl of something like going yes. through the day. He never, and he never sat down. He always Well, because stood, he's active yeah, and busy. He stood up Metabolism and he probably was amazing. Right. And so he would eat the little bowls right. of this and that during the day. Right. Yeah, but that going and just having uh, two cookies here and... Grazing all day. Yeah. So it's one theory. So another theory that's very popular right now mm -hmm. is intermittent fasting. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally started doing intermittent fasting at the beginning of this year because I had reached a plateau in my weight loss and I was stuck mm -hmm. doing what I'd been doing. No, sometimes no longer works after you've been doing it for so long. Right. So intermittent fasting, you can do it a couple of ways, but the way I did it is instead of eating my every three hours like I've been doing for the last several years, right. I would not eat for 16 hours and then I would eat a thousand calories over eight hours. Oh, wow. So you starve for 16, you eat all of your calories that you're supposed to have for that day mm -hmm. in eight hours. So the 16 includes when you're sleeping? Which is why it's doable. Okay. 
because I was going to say you'd be dizzy and passed out trying Correct. to work. And you think that, and right. so I don't recommend that you start it mm -hmm. on your first day of work. Start it on the weekend so your body can get used to that. Because mm -hmm. I'm somebody that rolls over, and I believe you should eat within the first 30 minutes of waking. Right. So to do the fasting was very different for me because Say now I'm no again. longer having when breakfast. When you get up, you should eat in within the, the first 30, 30 minutes, minutes with the waking up. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Unless you're doing that fasting, in which case mm -hmm. you can do it. 18 off, 8 on. Mm -hmm. You can do a 20 hours off, 4 on. Mm -hmm. But I find that it's kind of challenging to consume like a 1, thousand, 1200 calories in 4 hours. So right. I think that the 16 hours off, 8 hours on is the simplest way as long as you're incorporating some of that with your sleep time. Right. And so then you're not dangerously. Right. Right. Now I think what you're talking about with your friends is people that just starve themselves doing mm -hmm. these fad diets. Right. Without the cabbage diet, the right. cabbage soup. Uh, the Slim Fast, you, you know. You can still do those. No, the, that's all they had in their refrigerator was Slim Fast. Well. But you gotta have something more than you've just gotta Slim have, Fast. Um, you've gotta make sure that you're comprehensive. Mm -hmm. You can be on a liquid diet, honestly. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, a supervised liquid right. diet well, and juicing, be fine. if you're juicing and if you're getting juicing vegetables you and stuff. Juicing crap load of sugars that you're not paying attention to. But if so you're a lot of people the that carrots do that, and things like that? If you're doing that. Mm -hmm. But I know a lot of people, they're like, Dr. Blunt, I had a smoothie and I had pineapples and banana. Oh. You're at like 70 grams of sugar. Sugar, okay. That's not what so you need So it depends to do. on what we're doing. Absolutely. Okay. So just make sure that whatever you're doing, if you're trying to do a cabbage soup, you know, I try all these fads so I can tell my patients the cabbage soup diet was mm -hmm. ineffective. All it gives you is a little bit of diuresis. You can lose a little water weight. And guess what? Mm -hmm. If you felt like you starved yourself and then you overindulge, it's right. the people that feel like you're using food as a reward. We were going back to that. Mm -hmm. Do not think that, okay, I did great with the seven days mm -hmm. and now I can go out and have Krispy Kreme and I can go to Golden Corral <laughs> and have all you can eat buffet. Do right. not, you know, right. just, you threw away your entire week of good right. with this one meal of bad. So don't do that. Do not use your food as a reward. Okay, no food as a reward. Right. Okay. But it's the holiday time. Right. Spend time being active. Mm -hmm. Have fun with your friends and your family. Mm -hmm. Eat early. Mm -hmm. Like eat at 12 or 1 o'clock so you can give your time. Go out and play football with your family. Mm -hmm. Go walk in the neighborhood. Interact. Walk, interact. It is mm -hmm. not about the food. It's about the fellowship and your friends and family. So okay. get active. Have fun. And at the end of the day, forgive yourself. Okay. We're going to eat. We know we're not going to be successful every mm -hmm. meal eating all the Dr. Blunt recommended, recommended things, right? But we're going to so enjoy, enjoy in, mo in moderation. In moderation. Okay. Pay attention. Mm -hmm. Weigh yourself once a week during this time. If you see you gain two pounds mm -hmm. from Sunday to Sunday, guess what this means? The next week or two, her, you got to cut back. Okay. Well, we'll have you back in the new year and see how we survive. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. This has been Straightforward. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. Until next time, be blessed. Thank you.